Hey there, today we're talking about the most sexy topic of all, and that is pavement. <laughs> totally kidding, but not kidding. Uh, we're talking about how to clean up pavement in your photography using Adobe Photoshop. So, let's get into it. My name is Alex Nye. I'm a fine art and architectural photographer based in Southern California. So as I mentioned, I shoot a lot of architecture. Now buildings almost always have some sort of pavement in front of them, whether it's a parking lot or a street. And so it's really common that I'll need to clean up that pavement for my photos. So I'm gonna go through the steps I use for this process, including the inverse S-curve, which is sort of a signature technique that I developed. Start by opening your file and duplicating the background layer for retouching. First, use the spot healing brush tool to zip around and get rid of any of the really obvious distracting cracks, potholes, paint marks. Starting with some more general cleanup here. Use the content aware fill tool to remove any larger items like sewer caps. Next, we need to make a selection of the pavement only. To do this, start with your selection tool of choice. I prefer the pen tool for large geometric areas or the quick selection if there's a well-defined edge. You'll need to add and subtract with white and black until the pavement is properly selected. To select unusual shapes, the most effective way is to use the Select Color Range tool. Start with a low fuzziness and add to your selection until it looks clean. Invert the selection as needed and paint away what shouldn't be there, including foreground elements like bushes or trees. Refine your mask until the pavement is properly selected. Now convert that selection into a mask onto a new group called pavement. This is where all of our adjustments will live. Create a new curves layer in your group and test that you've selected the right area. In my opinion, pavement almost always needs to be darkened, so that usually comes first. So here comes the fun part. I call this the inverse S-curve. A very common method to add contrast is to create an S-curve by pushing highlights up and shadows down. Now here, we're doing the exact opposite. A good place to start is using the hand tool within the curves dialog. Find a brighter area and drag that down slightly, and then find a dark patch of pavement and drag it up slightly. This will give us two points on the curve to play with. From there, finesse those two points until your pavement's luminosity starts to even out. Another common adjustment I make is dragging the white point down to begin clipping the highlights. Every photo will require a different S-curve based on the pavement, so use your eye and play around until it feels right. Now keep in mind, by removing contrast, we're also removing texture, so be careful how far you pull this. You can see, as I duplicate the layer, it gets softer and softer until it's just pure solid gray. We don't want to make our pavement completely flat, we still want to see its natural texture, but just have it much less noticeable. To use the effect more sparingly, put a black mask on the curves layer and slowly paint on the areas where it needs it most with a low opacity soft brush. After that's finished, I bring in a few more curves layers to manipulate the lighting. Set the first one to increase brightness and use the gradient or soft brush to add the effect towards the top. Add another curves layer to darken and brush this in towards the bottom. Essentially, the goal here is to bring back a little dimension so the ground doesn't look so flat. This also achieves a natural vignette effect that draws the viewer's attention upwards towards our main subject. Lastly, I like to add a vibrance layer to reduce the saturation by 75 or 80%. This will neutralize the pavement closer to a true gray and remove color contamination. But I never desaturate to 100% because that also doesn't feel natural. Also, keep in mind, this approach that I'm describing really only works best with daytime photos. There are certain occasions like sunset or twilight when you would actually want a little bit of that blue or warm color cast inside of your foreground. Hey, future shaved Alex here. So I just had a brilliant idea that I could consolidate all those final steps of the process into a Photoshop action that I can give you to download for free because I love you and it'll save you some time. So it's pretty awesome. Check out how easy this is. So now all you have to do is activate a selection of the pavement and then with a little click of a button, boom, you'll have this complete group of layers with my standard adjustments as a starting point. From there, you'll wanna go in and fine tune the layers to your liking. I hope that saves you a few steps in your workflow. I know it will for me. Remember to double check your master group mask. There's a chance you need to refine the area being affected. After all that, you can flatten the document again and clean up any weird lines or artifacts that may have occurred. 
Okay, now hopefully that was concise and helpful. Now obviously there's certain scenarios that require extra special treatment or more advanced techniques, but that's kind of a general overview in my typical approach. Okay, that's all for me today. Signing off. Thank you for watching and I really hope you enjoy cleaning up pavement all day. It's a lot of fun. See you next time. Outro, outro, outro.